I'm Vivian. I'm training to be a doctor. I am going to an island for my mission. Do you want to know about my story? Please like and subscribe to the channel to hear my story. Hey, wait for us! My two friends and I shouted ourselves hoarse. Three of us ran and pulled a bunch of stuff behind us, running to the dock. The conductor was preparing to pull up the stairs when he turned around exasperatedly and said, Do you know I've been waiting for so long? You're hitchhikers. You should have arrived a little earlier. My two friends and I smiled friendly and clasped our hands in supplication. The staff, although exasperated, still let three of us on board. To talk about it a bit, the island we needed to go was very far from the mainland. Since there weren't many ships to get there, we had to hitchhike on a cruise ship. According to the plan, the trip must last about five days. Oh my gosh! I would die in five days at sea! Fortunately, I was accompanied by two friends, Frank and Nancy. These two were my close classmates, and they were also interns. Nancy, a friend of an Asian descent, <laughs> was small but very strong and hot-tempered. Frank, this guy, was a tall, strong physique. Just looking at him made others wary. They were both my friends and my protectors from bullying. At that moment, the ship was just exporting, and my two friends and I were struggling to carry a pile of medical equipment. Suddenly, the familiar figure in front of me attracted me. That person was my ex, Brian. <laughs> there was also a girl standing next to him. They were extremely intimate, so I guessed that she could be his lover. Not wanting to get into trouble, I quickly turned away, pretending I didn't know him. But I was just turning away when the sound of Brian's lover made me pause. Hey, look, is a girl who looks like a boy your ex? She's so cloddish. Why did you decide to date her back then? Come on, Jenna, stop talking about my past. Let's just have fun traveling, shall we? I know. My lover always thinks of others. It was poor of you to love someone so ugly like that. Although I was a little unhappy, I still kept the motto silence is gold to let it go. However, with my friends' personalities, they did not easily ignore it. Is a monkey allowed to be brought on the ship? Seeing it mincing makes me feel so dizzy. It's even more annoying when the monkey is standing at the bow of the ship with the best view of the sea. The monkey standing <laughs> at the bow was Jenna, of course, but no one else. Her face was extremely unsightly. However, there was nothing she could do because my friend didn't say her name. She could only watch us leave in danger. That night, we were served a portion of soup, grilled lobster, mixed noodles, and fruit juices. As I brought my portion back to the table, I unfortunately bumped into Jenna and caused a glass of juice to pour into her. I swore that this was an unexpected incident. I was going my way when she suddenly came out and bumped into me. I know you hate me, but you shouldn't do that. This dress is very precious to me because Brian bought it for me. Hey miss, this is not only my fault. It was you who rushed out suddenly. So? You mean my fault? You're so egregious. She said as she shed tears. Looking at such a pitiful crying figure, if someone hadn't known, they might have thought that I had just hit her. Hearing the noise, Brian ran over. He coaxed his girlfriend and heard her confess to the earlier inadvertent incident. Without confirming right or wrong, Brian immediately scolded me. Why did you do that to Jenna? Your actions are appalling. Apologize to her now. Is it true that my water glass was poured into Jenna? However, it was because we accidentally bumped into each other. I can't apologize to be polite, not because I did anything wrong. Let it go, babe. Just count it as all my faults. Jenna's actions really made me nauseous. Brian's next move, however, stunned me even more. He picked up his juice glass, <gasps> thrusting it at me. If you don't apologize, then count this as give and take. My two friends witnessed the incident from the beginning and were about to push forward to demand black and white clarification when I stopped them. We were at the cafeteria, and I didn't want to affect the mood of other guests. After floating at sea for two days, one of the passengers showed signs of severe flu. Fortunately, I brought quite a few cold medicines with me. As a result, that passenger quickly got better. However, apart from Brian and Vivian, the rest were family. So they quickly spread the disease to each other. 
The worst thing was Vera was a very sick seven-year-old girl. She had diarrhea, nausea, and even seizures, which made us struggle a lot. At that moment, me and two friends were the hope of the ship. Therefore, the three of us worked continuously, taking turns to look after Visik. There was a day that I didn't even dare to sleep to monitor the girl's situation. Because I was dedicated to my job, I was loved by everyone. Even Brian changed his attitude, no longer appearing cold and annoyed to me. You should have some porridge and take a nap. Let me watch over the girl. I see you've been overworked these days. Thank you. I politely received porridge, tried to keep my distance, and left as quickly as possible. However, Jenna was still annoyed. She rumbled. Are you worried about her? You want to betray me? The intern doctors are over-practicing. You feel bad for them too, don't you? Come and take care of this girl with me. Brian was always gentle <laughs> and kind to his lover. If I had not spent all my time studying and caring about Brian a little bit, he might still oh. be my lover by now. Looking at them, I was filled with envy and pain. Back in my room, I slept until 9 o'clock at night. Feeling hungry, I went down to the cafeteria. Suddenly, Brian was there too. The silence was not good, but I was afraid that if I politely greeted him, Jenna would misunderstand and be <laughs> jealous. So I starved myself and went to visit the patients first. At the same time, the captain announced that a storm was coming. Everyone on board at that time was extremely confused because they had never faced a storm, much less in the middle of the sea. Worst of all, there weren't any islands nearby where ships could anchor to avoid storms. When the storm came, big waves tilted the boat. Many windows were broken by the waves. Water flooded into the compartment. The furniture fell apart. A passenger accidentally fell and the boat swayed, causing the glass to hit his leg. As I heard that, my friends and I rushed to get to the man to a safer place to bandage. Frank and Nancy carried him running and I carried medical equipment. When walking through the hallway, the waves suddenly smashed the glass door. However, Brian had already been standing in front of the door to protect me. Brian, are you hurt? I'm fine. Are you okay? What are you two doing? You're too close. Despite Jenna's yelling, I kept questioning Brian to make sure he was okay. After that, we did first aid, took the glass out, and bandaged the man with Brian's dedicated support. The boat kept swaying, but Brian was constantly standing on the edge, keeping the furniture in place and not bumping into us. He also stood next to me to form a solid fulcrum, so I wouldn't fall. I was grateful for Brian's help, but it angered Jenna. I saw her clench her hands into fists, lips purse as if to hit me. Anyway, saving people was more important. I tried to calm down and continue my ambulance work. When the mass treatment was completed, the storm also weakened, and we all breathed a sigh of relief. As I turned to thank Brian, I noticed that there was also a deep wound in his shoulder, which was bleeding. He tried to hide it so I could treat the other man first. You sit down quickly. Let me bandage that wound. Jenna rushed over, throwing my hand away. She asked Frank to bandage Brian's wound. I don't trust you. Let others do it. Jenna, don't say that. Vivian just helped that man, didn't you see? Are you still defending her? Do you still like your old lover? You're being ridiculous. I never wanted to get involved in the romance, but the troubles kept coming up, making me extremely tired. Nancy watched it and it made her eyes itchy. Therefore, she winked and signaled me to go to my room to have a rest. After taking two steps, I received the shocking news that the boat had gone in the wrong direction due to the storm. It would take only four days to arrive, but in this situation, it would probably take a week. The difficulty continued to linger. I courted my sleep to get energy and change Nancy's shift. However, the alarm hadn't gone off when Nancy banged on the door. There's a problem! The man last night! He's having a fever, probably an infection! That's too bad. Let's get there quickly. After examining the patient, I found that the wound was nothing unusual. However, Upon examining the medication that the patient took, I discovered a strange pill. This drug was not among the other drugs that we carried. This thing must be prescribed by a doctor. If arbitrarily used, it would be very dangerous. Why is this pill here? 
You prescribed it. Why are you asking that? But what's wrong with it? Oh no, it's what it causes a patient to have a fever. We don't have it, and I don't know why it's here. I was bewildered. It was true that I took medicine for the patient. This pill was quite similar to the one that I needed to be prescribed. I thought maybe there was confusion in the takeout arrangements. I was so tired that I made the wrong diagnosis. The situation was tense, and Frank frighteningly rushed in again. The medicine we brought, it's gone. No way. I checked carefully before the storm. How could it disappear? I'm not kidding. There's nothing left. This news stunned my mind. There were many sick people on board. Both the flu and the impact of the rainstorms made the patient's conditions worse. If the medicine was gone, what would be the sick like? Prescribing the wrong medicine for the patient? Losing the medicine? What kind of doctor are you? It's not the time to impute the blame on anybody. We have to find a solution. She made the uncle dangerous, and yet you can still defend her? Jenna's words had an impact on the other patient's wife, which made her very angry. She rushed to beat me repeatedly and relentlessly criticized my irresponsible behavior, even demanding that I be taken to court. The passengers, who used to be very friendly and loved me, also turned away because they thought I was a bad doctor. Brian once again didn't care about his wound, stood in front of the passengers, and took extreme actions to touch me deeply. Everyone calm down. Nancy, take Vivian to her room, quickly. I returned to my room in great fear. I tried to remember what had happened to know where I went wrong. You've always been careful. I believe you're not that careless. Yes, I saw you check the medicine and wrap it carefully in plastic to prevent it from getting wet. Someone has deliberately harmed you. Do you two really think so? Of course. You should investigate to clarify this. Let us take care of the patient. I find Jenna very suspicious. She's always hated you. I see. Thank you. After Frank and Nancy left, I thought a lot about what they said. So I surreptitiously followed Jenna. The result was that she just punched on Brian all day and did nothing <laughs> unusual. Just when I thought I was wrong and was about to give up, I accidentally saw Jenna drop a blister back. It was a strange drug that appeared in the wounded man's prescription. I also found out that she went to the room of the person with the flu, pretending to take care of him, but meticulously checking the medications he took. There was a sudden suspicion in my heart. To be sure of my speculation, I deliberately hit Jenna hard, causing her to fall to help her up. What are you doing? My apologies, but you are not only looking tired, your body is also hot. Are you sick? Who needs your care? I met Brian, told him my diagnosis of Jenna's illness, and instructed him on how to best take care of Jenna to avoid her getting worse. However, my real purpose was to let him watch Jenna all the time to make her unable to walk freely and act out of ordinary. Why did I do that? As I speculated, Jana was the one who had hidden the drug. And now that she was sick, she would want to find out what kind of cold medicine to get herself. I needed to find a way to make her confess herself as a culprit. Brian did better than I thought he would. Jana could only stay in her room, walking around and her condition worsened. The time came. I asked Frank to help me find an excuse to take Brian away. Jenna jumped at the chance, running to an unoccupied room and surreptitiously pulling out the medicine hidden under the bed, unaware that there were many pairs of eyes watching her. Are you the one hiding the medicine? Why did you do that? How, how can you know it? I didn't believe what Vivian said, but now I'm seeing it with my own eyes. It turns out to be Vivian. Do you want to harm me? Hey, you did it yourself. I'm not here to harm you. I snatched Jenna's bag, searched for the blister pack the day before, and showed it to everyone there. It's not just hiding drugs. Jenna even changed the patient's medication, which caused him to have a fever. Just because I have the same drug, and you dare blame me? Bastard! I took the pill that was in the patient's pile with the part I found in Jenna's handbag. The two parts perfectly match, making her mouth stiff. Is that enough to prove that you swapped? Jenna, why did you do this? I hate Vivian. I don't want her to be liked by you and everyone. 
I want you to just pay attention to me. Jenna said as she cried, but no one could sympathize. Just because of her selfishness, she didn't even care about other people's lives and health. Even the incredibly generous Brian couldn't accept it and immediately broke up with her. Everything unraveled. I regained my purity and I received an apology from everyone. The medicine was also found and sick people could be well taken care of. So I was somewhat less worried. The boat landed safely. Brian graciously took my hand and led me to the island. Being stuck on the boat and facing difficulties and challenges made me exhausted, sick and faint. When I woke up, I saw Brian by my side. His eyes were deep and his pale skin looked like he was sleep deprived. Nancy told me that he was very worried about me. He was mostly there, watching me all the time. I also remembered that Brian had helped me a lot when we were on the ship and I couldn't help but appreciate it. Brian, thank you very much. No, I did it because I felt guilty for thinking badly of you and for acting inappropriately towards you in the cafeteria. That was a misunderstanding. You don't have to feel sorry. I'm sorry for what happened to you and Jenna. You don't need to say that. She did it herself. I can't love someone so mean like that. Oh, so what do you think about me? Am I good? Of course you're good. Suddenly, Brian leaned down and kissed my forehead, causing me to stiffen. Brian also shyly turned away. The feelings of love that had been burning before seemed to rush back. We were both silent, but looking into each other's eyes, we both understood what the other was thinking. It was an implicit affirmation that we had given each other a chance to fall in love again. I would definitely cherish this precious thing and never lose Brian again.